Hi, once again on this channel our topic is 10 print program in Commodore Basic or 10 print maze. But this time we will not create 10 print maze printing out characters line by line as we normally would, uh, but instead what we are going to do is print our characters vertically, filling the screen column by column. And then after that we are going to do something similar and print our characters diagonally filling the entire screen. And we do all this because of serious small competitions that we had in basic programming language group, thanks to Mr. Hogal Wessling, who posted these little tasks uh, for us to solve. Um, and if you recognize his name, that's because he is very active in our basic community. And he also wrote a book about Amiga 500 Mini, and he has his own YouTube channel as well. So if you want to know a little bit more, you can find his links in the description of this video down below. Now, back to our topic. Vertical and diagonal, 10 print maze on Commodore 64. So, let's begin. Okay, what you see on the screen um, is my solution for 10 print vertical. Uh, for all other solutions, I will put the link in the description of this video for you, can, for you to check out. There are plenty other platforms and plenty other uh, basic versions, uh, not only Commodore um, basic. And as you can see, um, we have one liner. Um, so yeah, it, it was not really a goal of these competitions to create uh, the shortest code possible. Uh, it was more about elegance and speed and some other parameters, but this was my like personal goal um, because then print is one liner, so I want to keep it that way. Uh, so yeah, obviously this is abbreviated. So let me show you how full code looks like, and uh, let's run it. And here we go. Yeah, it's a bit slow, of course. Um, there, there were faster version. Um, I'm using print. Uh, using poke seems to be faster in this case. Um, but I thought, hey, um, it's 10 print, so and it's done. So let me break this code in se into several lines that we can. Uh, see more clearly what's happening here. So at the beginning we have two for loops here um, and these are our main for loops for the um, columns and for the rows. So basically we are working with matrix. Um, so line number one will be uh, this for i loop. Um, so for i equals and that is um, instead of zero so we can do zero to 39 so that is 40 columns uh, line number two will be for j equals zero to 24 again that is 25 rows and then uh, we are printing on line number three I'm going to print space now we are using space command so that we can print our character at specific column so this space command will contain actually a variable i which is a variable counter from this for loop and which represents our column uh, okay so we have space now we print um, character um, random character like we would uh, normally uh, print in regular 10 print phase so what we are doing is printing 205.5 plus random that's it so so far so good but now we cannot continue printing because then we will print um, in rows what we need to do is step into the next line so to do that we have this part here um, this character 11 minus uh, some logic and some other logic um, the reason why we have a little bit of logic here because we don't want to go to the next line every time 
once we reach the last row we don't want to go to the next line because in that case the whole screen would shift upwards um, also we don't want to do the next line when we are located in the last column because in that case um, basic would create additional line for us um, it will break the screen and injected the, the empty line thinking that we are entering command and we need more space <laughs> for our line so yeah we cannot do that either so that's the reason why we have these two additional logic for this command so for example uh, it's 11 and if you are not in the last row uh, this will be uh, minus one and minus one uh, minus and minus one will, uh, will give us plus one so this would be plus one and this second part also if you are not in the last column uh, we will have minus minus one which is also plus one and this should give us 13. Uh, in case that we are in the last column or in the last row any of these uh, will be zero so in that case we will have either 12 or in case that both of our both of these are zero we will have 11 um, and luckily um, character petsky characters 11 and 12 um, do nothing uh, in basic they're, they're empty so if we print character uh, 11 or 12 there will be nothing on screen so let me write that as well so we have 11 minus j less of uh, less than 24 minus i less than 39 and we are done with this line now what i missed here is that we can combine these two logic together and save one byte um, so instead of these two different um, uh, separate logics uh, we can do and okay so in this case we have just one result so it will be either zero or, or minus one and because of that we need to change this to 12 so this should give us the same result but it will be one byte shorter one character shorter sorry um, and then line number four we have next and that uh, closes um, our 4j loop and then we have at line number five we have print uh, character 19 now character 19 is the petsky control character that will position our cursor at the beginning of the screen so in the top left corner so we need that for every time that we are starting to fill our column from the top of the screen to the bottom uh, we have to position ourselves at the uh, top left corner so that's why we have this command as well uh, and then on line number six we are closing our last for loop and that is this for i loop for the columns and that's about it now if i list this of course i will delete zero and list this okay and if i run it here we go so yeah uh, there is also um, a version with uh, using poke instead of print um, it's much faster um, now the reason why it's faster it's not because poke is as a command is faster than print command it's not the bottleneck for this solution is this command right here this space <laughs> um, actually and of course this little bit of logic but this space command actually takes a lot of time to move our cursor to a certain position on the screen so yeah 
let me show you how the Pokemon looks like and it's very very beautiful so the creator of this little code which you see on the screen is Mr. Holger Wrestling himself and uh, this piece of code is actually optimized not to be the shortest code but to be the fastest now let me enter this and let me show you the full code and as you can see some of the variables are uh, pre-declared um, and this was done for the purpose to gain speed of course it uses poke command uh, so instead of regular um, character 205.5 basically what we want is 205 or 206 uh, we have uh, 77.5 so that means that we are printing either character 77 or 78 um, but yeah that's about it uh, and it's extremely fast so let's run it and it's done <laughs> if you compare that to my solution yeah, yeah i think th we don't need to measure it. it's really really fast okay now we are going to 10 print diagonal okay so this is my solution for 10 print diagonal uh, for all other solutions you can check the link in the description of this video uh, again there are plenty of solutions there as well and um, as you can see uh, my solution is still one liner uh, but this time i didn't print the characters on the screen this time i use poke commands um, but again um, it's still one liner uh, so let me list the full code so here it is uh, it's even a bit shorter than my first 10 print vertical um, and uh, let's run it but this is very very slow <laughs> it's extremely slow uh, and i will explain why is that um, But it's like weird to look at this uh, 10 print maze created this way <laughs> makes no sense at all but it's fun and just a little bit more we are done okay so that was then print diagonal so let me show you the code again um, the same approach we are working with the matrix but this time uh, it's a little bit different um, and um, you can see uh, from the beginning that we have some values that goes um, they don't match with um, values that we usually use for our Commodore 64 uh, for 40 columns and 25 rows um, and I will explain why is that um, maybe I will even can draw something to explain this code a little bit better um, but let's start to uh, dissect this code and see what do we have here so i will break this into several lines again so first line we will have for loop for i equals 0 to 63 and then uh, what we have uh, after that is uh, we are introducing a new variable called j equals i now the reason why we do this because we are going to mess around with this uh, i variable and we are we don't want to destroy that and break this uh, i variable as a counter for this for loop so we are assigning this value to our new variable j and we are going to work with that variable uh, from now on so that's that's about it 
so for our next line is for a equals uh, 0 to 24 which is okay that's number of rows um, I forgot to mention that this for loop uh, first for loop uh, represents number of columns and there are more <laughs> columns here there is than there is on the screen and I'll explain why is that uh, okay so that was line number two line number three is of course poke and poke goes from 1023 sorry then we have minus and um, if you look at this number, uh, which is 1023, um, you would think that I did something wrong because our screen memory begins at 1024. Uh, but it's not a mistake. Uh, this was done on purpose and I will explain why is that. So what we have next is simply calculating the um, columns, column and row so x and y coordinates where we are where we're going to poke our character so yeah that's um, a uh, multiplied by 40 uh, plus j and then we have additionally plus one now this plus one is here because uh, it's not implemented in this number here um, again uh, you would think why would I do that uh, I will explain that shortly and then everything in this inside these brackets we're going to multiply with with a little bit of logic and we are going to check whether or not our j variable is less than 40 and our j variable is bigger or equal to zero now this part here is the reason um, we are checking whether or not we are still uh, once our calculation is done in this part here uh, whether or not this is visible on the screen are we still in that memory location for the screen or we are out of it in case that we are out of it uh, this piece of logic will be zero multiplied with this bracket will give us zero and what will happen we are going to poke our character uh, at position memory position 1023 now that memory position uh, is not visible on the screen of course and that's the particular reason why i chose it because i need to poke uh, because this is one liner it constantly loops and every time we must poke something somewhere <laughs> and so i choose this location this memory location which is not visible on the screen so in case that our calculated point our calculated x and y coordinates doesn't position on the screen so it's outside the screen uh, we are going to instead of pointing at that some random uh, memory position and screwing something up in uh, commodore 64 memory what you're going to do is just poke always at the same position at the same memory position and that is 1023 and nothing will happen and nothing will be visible on the screen and we are still missing the second part of our poke command and that is of course our character which is random plus 77.5 uh, like i mentioned before uh, we are using poke so we cannot use that regular um, character um, value 205 and 206 um, these are now new values that we need to use and uh, in line 4 we have j equals j minus 1 so for each for the next row that we are uh, filling up uh, we have to shift one position to the left so we are de decrementing our j variable uh and after that we have nothing special except closing one loop and closing the other and that's about it now i still didn't explain why we have <laughs> 63 columns here uh, 
but I will try to explain it by drawing. So I think it would make more sense. Um, so just to, and we will delete the zero line and let's list it. Okay, let's run it. Yep, still working, very nice. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, let's try to go to Petsky Editor and I will try to draw there what's happening here and why do we have more columns that we have on the screen. Here we are in our Petsky Editor and let's imagine that this little uh, rectangle, this white rectangle that I drawn, uh, represents the screen, visible screen of our Commodore 64. And what our program is doing, um, and I will just use asterisks here, we are starting at row uh, zero, which is top first row, replacing the character, and then we are going to the next row, uh, and we are placing that character shifted uh, to minus one in x direction, so that means here. And we are going through each of these 25 uh, rows. So we are going like so, right? Each um, row, one uh, position, one character to the left. So what will happen, or what happened when we start at first row, first column? So we are going to the next one, right? So the next one is here, which is out of the screen, out of the visible screen. And we are going here and here and so on for each of these 25 rows. Now, you can imagine that we are entering the area of memory of Commodore 64, which uh, we shouldn't poke there. <laughs> and uh, that's the reason why we have all that logic in case that we exit the screen that we enter this area here all we're doing is printing here um, constantly putting our character into same memory location which is not visible on the screen uh, and the reason why we have more columns that we actually have on uh, our commodore 64 we have 63 columns instead of just um, uh, 40. Well, the reason is very simple. Um, let me continue to draw this. So this is the column number and I will just place uh, number one here. Like pink. This is one. I need to go step by step. Of course, each of these outside the screen are not visible. So we are continue to doing this. And this is what we see on the screen. We don't actually see that this part here. Uh, so we are filling the screen like so. When we came to the last column, this is our last line. Sorry. This is our last. Where is it? That's it. So we would left with the half of the almost half of the screen blank, empty. Uh, to fill this um, lower part of the screen, this bottom right part, we need to continue here and then filling the rest of the screen. Now it's shifted. Uh, situation is shifted from this first part when we are outside the screen at the beginning and then we are entering the screen memory and then we are filling all of these and yeah so if you if i draw just the last one uh, let's see where okay Let me do this. Uh, and I will move this. So this is how our four loops are 
scanning through this this piece of memory and everything that falls into the screen memory it gets shown on the screen uh, displayed properly everything else just ends up right here in this position outside the screen so yeah that's uh, explanation how this code actually works <laughs> yeah that's all about 10 uh, print diagonal i want to show you an, one more thing um which is initially wasn't supposed to be part of this video but yeah the the competition for that one also uh, finished and uh, we have uh, the results um, and I want to show you my solution just quick look at it um, it's for 10 print spiral so let me show you that so this time we have two lines of code yeah unfortunately I couldn't squeeze that into a single line of code but yeah two lines of code uh, let's list the full code here it is and uh, let's run it. And again, not very fast, but yeah <laughs> and yeah and it's done yeah that's about it so yeah that's all that i have for you today uh, until next time goodbye